today. And so, Father, I pray that we would clear everything else out of our minds if we haven't already, that we would focus upon your word to us specifically, to us specifically. Father, I pray that you would just touch on our hearts, our tender spots, that you would just mess up some of those ways that we are and that we've become all of these years on this planet, that we would be able to think differently, see things differently. God, we may not be able to get through everything, but with the right perspective, we can. And so I thank you. Our perspective and our focus this morning is on the cross, is on what you've done for us, an empty cross, meaning a reminder of what you've done for us and that you're not still there, that, Lord, you were risen, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. So, Father, I pray that you would speak to us, that you would bring freedom and liberty in this house today, and that we would be changed forevermore. Lord, we love you, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, guys, how many of you enjoyed the series that we've been talking about, that it, it came from within? Uh, guys, I don't know about you, but, man, I have been revolutionized and changed in this series because... A lot of times we think, well, man, I don't know why I said that. Come on, have you ever been there? I don't know why. I don't know where that came from, and I don't know why I acted that way. Jesus does. He said it came from where? Your heart. You know, the, the Bible tells a story in Matthew uh, chapter 15 about when the Pharisees walked up to Jesus and questioned him, saying, why don't your disciples wash their hands? That's where we get something like we talked a couple of weeks ago about God never said that. Cleanliness is next to godliness, right? Maybe it started then. I don't know. But anyway, the Pharisees walked up to Jesus and questioned his authority and said, Why don't your disciples wash their hands before they eat? And I love what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 15, verses 18 and 19. Jesus set the record straight. Come on, guys. He said, The things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart. So the next time you say, man, I can't believe I said that. It didn't come from your mouth. It came from your heart. Oh, it's going to be good today. And Jesus said, these things come out of a person's mouth, come from the heart, and these defile them. It's not dirty hands. It's your dirty mouth that came from your dirty heart. Oh, come on. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery. Sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, in other words, lying about people, and slander, murdering somebody with your mouth. Oh, Lord. oh come on, we're going to go on. Proverbs, chapter 4 and verse 23, this has been our go-to verse uh, this entire series. Remember, Solomon, the wisest man to ever live, wrote three books of the Bible. He said, guard or monitor your heart above all else. In other words, above everything, keep your heart in check because it determines the course of your life. So the last couple of weeks we've been talking about, um, well, we've been talking about two things. We're going to talk about a third thing, and then we're going to talk about a fourth thing. Can you help me with that little monster thing for me? Um, we have been talking about anger, right? We talked about anger was the very first week. We dealt with anger. We dealt with uh, guilt last week. That was a fun one, right? Yeah. Come on, somebody just say amen to that. I know, because it applies to all of us. All of these apply to all of us, and here's the reason. Because we're talking about the heart, and all of us have a heart, so this message is for everyone. And I want to just kind of preface something real quickly. Um, it's amazing to me how God always brings something at the right and perfect time, and it seems like it's always when we've been counseling with someone or ministering to someone, and then all of a sudden here comes a message, and they'll text me and say, I can't believe you talked about that. That's what's going on in me. Did you do that for me? No, I was not preaching at anybody. I swear we were not. So if this applies to you today, and it's preaching at you because it preached at me when we were working on it, then take it up with Jesus. I'm just the male lady, all right? Take it up with Jesus. I'm just the male lady. Everything that comes from my mouth came first from the heart of God, and he put it in there, and I had to deal with myself before I ever am dealing with you today. So I promise, let's leave it there. Anger has that voice, and that voice is this. You owe me, right? When we're angry about something, that's really what we're saying is you owe me. So we've been talking about habits because there's four things that we're going to talk about in the month of February. We're on our third right now. There are four, one, two, three, and four things that we're dealing with. First one was anger. You owe me. And what do you do to get rid of anger? We have to practice a habit of forgiveness. Not waiting till we feel like it. Practice a habit 
of forgiveness, and that's daily. It means you don't go to bed with junk on your heart. You forgive and you close people's accounts so that tomorrow morning we wake up to a fresh slate. Are you with me? The second thing that we talked about is guilt. I owe you. We talked about that elephant in the room. We had a a five-and-a-half-foot elephant sitting right here in the room, and that's what guilt is. Guilt is that feeling of, I owe you, and I know I owe you, and it's the elephant in the room, and we all feel it, but we're not talking about it. And so that is that expression, I owe you. And how do you defeat it? By the habit of confession. By going to somebody and saying, hey, I am feeling so guilty about this. I hurt you. I offended you. I owe you an apology. I owe you something. And that is the habit of confession. Does it feel good? Is it humiliating? It does not feel good. Yes, it's humiliating. However, when we confess, it begins to bring that freedom that we're looking for. Third thing we're going to talk about today is jealousy and or envy. We'll talk about that in a minute. So the reason the house lights are not on is because today we're talking about envy. And one of the things that we know, one of the things that we recognize is the green-eyed monster. Will you turn these back green to, um, please, Andy, if, you're, if it's possible? Because here's the thing, guys. I want you to see that what happens to us in our lives at times is that the green-eyed monster is that thing that just eats us up. And the funny thing about jealousy is that none of us think that we're ever jealous. Some of you are going, oh, I could have stayed home today because this is so not me. I am not a jealous person. Do you know why jealousy is not ever really admitted to? Because we feel like it's a juvenile elementary feeling. You're supposed to be jealous when you're in second grade and somebody steals your friend. But you're not supposed to feel jealous when you're 40 years old and somebody invades your territory. Are you with me? So it's not a feeling that we ever own up to. Instead, what we do is we just avoid the people that make us feel that way. Can I get all in your business this morning? All right. So we're going to talk about the green-eyed monster. And actually, that is something that was coined uh, in, in the play Othello. And you might have seen this before. If you know anything, listen, I'm, a, I'm an English major. I'm good at English and grammar, but not necessarily literature. Can you bring me the next slide, guys? Oh, beware, my lord, of jealousy. It's the green-eyed monster, which doth mock the meat it feeds on. Now, I know that sounded really fancy, but basically what it means is this. Picture it like a green python just wrapped around you. It's eating your insides out and laughing at you at the same time. Why? Because here's the deal. Jealousy is that thing that eats us up on the inside, all the while laughing at us that we feel that way anyways in the first place. We shouldn't even feel that way. So we feel it, and then we get to feel the guilt that we felt that way. Are you with me? So it eats you up on the inside, and it mocks you and laughs at you the whole time. I can't believe you're so stupid right now. Anybody with me? All right. So it's the green-eyed monster, and it's that thing that just attacks us, and it's that thing that gets in there and changes everything. It changes everything inside of us, and therefore everything inside of every relationship that we try to have. Hey, let's look at what the Bible says about jealousy. First of all, Jesus had a brother named James the Less that wrote a book in the Bible, and, and let's look at what Jesus' little brother said. James chapter 3 and verse 16 says, Any place you find jealousy and selfish ambition, you will discover chaos and evil thriving under its rule. It's going to get good today. All right, so here's the thing. This is what we want to point out to you real quickly. Jealousy and envy they're used interchangeably, but they're a little bit different. So let's take a look at jealousy and envy, because the whole point of studying this is so that we can begin to guard our heart, that we don't pick up stuff in this life and take it to bed with us at night and then have it start eating up our relationships, our friendships, our, our, our marriages, our, our children, right? Because when we're feeling these things, anger and guilt and jealousy and envy, it changes us on the inside, but man, it manifests on the outside. Are you with me? And we begin to attack people. Jealousy is rooted in fear. Jealousy is rooted in fear that something that you possess is going to get taken away. You can call it territorial. You can call it, I'm just trying to protect you. Let's call it what it is. It's called jealousy. And it'll destroy everything we touch. It's quiet. (laughs) Jealousy is rooted in fear. It's that gripping feeling that says, oh my gosh. Something's going to get taken away from me, or I'm going to be measured and found wanting. I'm going to be compared, and I'm not going to measure up. 
that's where jealousy is rooted. Envy is a little bit different. Rooted, uh, envy is rooted in anger, that we don't have something that we want. And it moves on to, and I don't like the fact that you have it either. Because if I can't have it, you shouldn't be able to have it. Jealousy is rooted in fear. Envy is rooted in anger. And I want to point out this to you as we, as we launch into this message. Because here's the thing. The Bible calls God a jealous God. If we look in the second commandment, we'll see this. Exodus 20 and 40 says this. I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. Now, let me talk about jealousy for a second because this jealousy is a jealousy that is a righteous jealousy. You're mine. I ain't playing your game. I will not split my affection with anybody. It's kind of like, can I be jealous for my husband? Mm-hmm. He's mine. Don't get near him. Are you with me? That's a jealousy. Now, where there comes in a problem, and we'll talk about that here in just a minute, but I want you to see this, is that probably at the end of, of today's message or somewhere today, um, you're going to hear this song, um, How He Loves, and it starts out, He is jealous for me. God is jealous for us. He's jealous for our heart. He is jealous for us. He wants us. He wants us to love him. He wants us to serve him. He is a jealous God. However, God is jealous, but he's never envious. Does that make sense? He's jealous, but he's never envious. The first early childhood remembrance that we have of jealousy that we've ever seen depicted in anything is probably from Snow White. Right? Come on, any Disney fans in the building? Guys, I want you to look close. Anybody know who that is? That's Pastor Jennifer. What you might not know is she played Snow White, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, and Belle from Beauty and the Beast. And Mary and Poppins, but he never mentioned. Yeah, that we're not going to mention her today. Anyway, listen. He says she's not a princess. She's, would anybody agree she's not a princess? Come mm -hmm. on, Mary Poppins is not a princess. Can I get a witness from somebody? Come on. All right. Case in point, baby. Here, fist bump. All right. Listen, guys. You know, in all of our travels over the past 20 years when we were doing schools in and out of, you know, 500 schools, we loved going in, and I loved introducing her as a former Disney princess. And I loved by following up that I was the real Prince Charming. Can I get a witness from somebody? And with that, we will move on. We can take that right down. <laughs> now, guys, here's what's awesome. This, now, now, here's what's really cool. Most people did not know she played Snow White. And I love it, man, how that rolls in perfectly to the story today of jealousy. Let's look real quickly. When you look at, um, at the story of jealousy, most of us would remember it um, because even if you're a guy, and we were talking about this when we were working on the message, she said, even a guy, even dudes know about mirror, mirror on the wall, right? Turn to that next screen if you wouldn't mind. Um, each day the vain queen would consult with her magic mirror, right? She would stand in front of it and she would say, magic mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? And as long as the mirror answered, you're the fairest one of all, then everything was cool, right? The problem came when, when what was repeated to her was that Snow White was the fairest of them all. And see, the problem is, is as long as the message, as long as what was coming out of that mirror was in favor of the queen, then Snow White would be safe from the queen's cruel jealousy. Can I just tell you that jealousy changes us? We saw it depicted in the movie, but we see it in real life, guys. Jealousy will cause us to do crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. Jealousy gets in our head, it gets in our hearts, and it absolutely changes us. Jealousy affects our relationships. Would you agree with that today? Yeah. You know, I, I love what Jennifer said. She said jealousy changes us. There are several stories in the Bible. If I can give you just a, a, a quick uh, version in a nutshell. If you look before the foundation of the world, the Bible talks about three archangels, Michael, Gabriel, and an angel named Lucifer. Well, do you realize that Lucifer had a job in heaven? And as a matter of fact, according to Scripture, we find out that he had a problem with jealousy. He didn't like the props the Prince of Peace was getting. He didn't like that God was getting all the glory. Come on, guys. So jealousy was found in him. And can I tell you that jealousy changes you. It changed the most beautiful archangel into the devil himself. Jealousy will change you. 
We find out two stories in the book of Genesis. We find out that Cain and Abel, the first two sons born to Adam and Eve, had a jealousy issue. We find out that Cain's offering was rejected. Abel's was accepted. Cain killed his brother in a jealous rage. How about Joseph? The Bible talks about how Joseph had several brothers and out of jealousy because his father gave him a coat of many colors. His brothers were jealous, pushed him into the pit and sold him into slavery. They affect, or jealousy rather, affects your relationship and it begins to change you guys from your heart, from the inside out. What's on the inside will eventually manifest on the outside. If you agree with that, say amen. Now, let, let me share a story with you about jealousy. 1 Samuel 18, verses 6 through 9. Let's look at that quickly. The Bible said when David returned from killing the Philistine, by the way, there was a 10-foot giant. You know what I love about the story, man? Commentaries say David might have been about 5 foot 6, about a buck 35. Come on, man. And he had went against an undefeated giant by the name of Goliath. The Bible says he was 9 foot 9, probably a rough estimate, about 500 pounds, built like a Mack truck from top to bottom. The Bible says he was a man of war from his youth. He was undefeated. But I love it because how many know that when God is in it, small things become big. Can you say amen? Let's look at the story. The Bible says when David returned from killing the Philistine, the women came out all from all the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul playing songs of joy on timbrels. Let's look at the next verse. The Bible says the women sang as they played, and they said, Saul has killed the thousands, and David his ten thousands. That didn't go over very good. When you got a jealous person in authority, when somebody else gets props and praise besides you, all hell breaks loose. Come on, guys. That's exactly what happened in the Scripture. The Bible says... Uh, King Saul said, this saying did not please me. They have given David honor for ten thousands, but me only thousands. Now what more can they do but make him king? He was scared he was about to lose his throne. And the Bible says, read this with me, and Saul was what? Jealous and did not trust David from that day on. Jealousy causes you to be untrustful. Amen? You, you are not able to trust anybody when you have a spirit of jealousy. Now, here's what I want you to understand. Remember, David was about five, six at the most, and he defeated a 10-foot giant, and all of a sudden, uh, that, that brought jealousy on King Saul because Saul was afraid to fight the giant. The Bible says every time the Goliath came down from the mountain in the valley to challenge the armies of Israel, they would all run and hide every time this 10-foot giant made his appearance. They were afraid. And I love the fact that a shepherd boy, come on guys, out of nowhere and nobody from nowhere came up and looked and, and offered his brother some food and all of a sudden he looked at the giant and instead of being overcome with fear, he was overcome with faith. Come on guys. And he looked at Saul and said, I will fight the giant. Saul looked at him and said, you ain't nothing but a boy. But can I tell you today that David looked at him and said, King, what you might not know is when I was out watching my father's flock, a lion and a bear tried to take him. And he said, I took my stick and I killed the lion and the bear. And I know that if God is with me, I can kill that 10-foot giant. And can I tell you today that Saul was ate up with jealousy because David walked out. He didn't have a sword. He didn't have a spear. But he took a sling and five rocks. Why five? Because Goliath had four brothers. Come on, guys. So if they wanted some, they could step up and get some. Come on. So here's what happened. David killed him with a sling and a stone, and all of a sudden Saul's jealous begin to, uh, jealousy began to bubble up, and the rage began to overtake him. And if that did not make matters, what, what made matters worse is that Jonathan, the heir to the throne, made a covenant with David. The Bible says he took his, uh, his garment and his, his armor and everything and even his sword and gave it to David symbolically saying, you know what, the throne will not go to me, it's going to go to you. Saul sinned. 
he fell out of favor with Jehovah God Almighty and the anointing of God rested and resided on David. Hear me. Listen, Saul fell out of favor and all of a sudden Samuel come by. The same man that anointed Saul all of a sudden anointed, appointed, called and commissioned a young shepherd boy by the name of David. You got to realize Jesse, David's father, had eight sons. Listen closely. Eight is symbolic of new beginning. So Israel was at a new stage and a new age with a new king called David, a man after God's own heart. So here's what happened. The, the armor was given to David, and all of a sudden the Bible said they made a covenant. They would cut themselves. They became a blood brother. David and Jonathan did, signifying and symbolizing that David would be the new king of Israel. Saul hated him. He was so jealous. The Bible said that one day David was playing on his harp. Saul took a javelin and threw it as hard as he can, trying to pin David to the wall. Not once, but twice. Saul was so angry, so envious, so filled with, with jealousy that he tried to kill David. Listen to me closely. Jealousy and envy will cause you to do evil things because it's in our heart. So we want to drive this home today because jealousy is a really big deal to God. You want to know how we know that jealousy is a really big thing to God? Let's take a look at the Ten Commandments. Of the Ten Commandments, five out of the ten have to do with jealousy, comparison, envying, wanting something that is not yours. Thou shalt not kill. Most of us will say, I would, I, I would never become a murderer over something in my heart. Possibly not taking a javelin and sticking somebody to the wall. You probably, I couldn't see Kristen doing that one. However, the girl is feisty, and I think she can scratch. And here's what I know. In all honesty, every one of us has to realize something. The word murder here is not just talking about taking physical blood. When we slander somebody according to the word of God, we are killing or murdering their reputation. We're destroying their character. And we're telling stories on them so that other people come against that person. We may not physically take somebody's life, but when we stand at the water cooler at work, when we stand around the back of a, of a building somewhere, whether it be school or whether it be church or whether it be uh, in a community center or whether it be in a bleacher somewhere at a, at a football game, when we're talking about somebody and we're defaming them, we're tearing them to pieces, we are killing them according to the word of God. Slander is serious business to God. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's wanting something that ain't yours. Thou shalt not steal, wanting something that's not yours. Thou shalt not bear false witness. One more time, he hits it again. Don't talk about each other. You got a problem? Go to the person. Don't tear each other up and don't tear each other to pieces. And thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, covet thy neighbor's house, wife, or possessions. Again, that's wanting something that is not yours. To God, five out of the Ten Commandments, it's a big deal. So we need to deal with what's on our heart and investigate and look a little bit closer. I know that none of us are probably going to walk up to each other and say, oh, My problem with you is really me. You know why? Because we don't see it that way. It's everybody else. But here's the problem with that. When you're the common denominator in all of the relationships, chances are it might have something to do with you. Right? And I'm going to say with us, because my husband's had to tell me that many years ago. So let's keep on going. Because I'm here to preach to you. I already got this thing figured out. Just kidding. I do not. Totally kidding. We adults don't like to admit it. We like to just simply avoid the people that make us feel like that because they have issues. And I'm not just going to put myself in that mess. Are we sure they have issues or is the issue ours? Now, how do we know if jealousy is in our heart? Let's do that. Can we do that? Are y'all having fun yet? Let's go. How do we know if jealousy is in our heart? Let's go. Number one, you often don't like people for no good reason. Mm. For some reason, they rub you the wrong way. You shift blame to them and talk about is their issues, not ours. Mm, we say things like, um, mm, I just can't, I can't put my finger on it. They're just, 
They're just too nice. <laughs> too pretty. What is too nice, by the way? I'm just wondering. They're just too nice. They must be fake. Mm. She's just too pretty. She's plastic. I know she's fake. Mm. Oh, come on. I just don't like them. There's just something about them. I can't tell you how many conversations we've had around a dinner table going, why don't you like them? You don't even know them. I don't know. I just think they're arrogant. Really, you don't even know them. Or they think they're better than I am. Mm. That's usually what the answer is. Well, they just think they're better than me. Are you sure? Or are you so wrapped up in comparing yourself that you found yourself wanting? You found yourself not measuring up, and therefore... They think they're better than you. Here's the thing. Guys, it's not a them issue at all. Come on, come on. It's not a them issue at all. It's they are simply a reflection of something that we are not. And that bothers us. Being around some people is a reflection of things we don't have yet. Being a reflection of maybe our own failures. <laughs> maybe a way in our lives that we've not succeeded just yet. Is anybody with me? We often don't like people for no good reason at all, but in our head, it's a good reason. And if you ask me, why do I not like that person? I'll just tell you, I don't know. I don't know. Just watch. Just watch. I'll give you a good reason as soon as it shows its head. No, you won't, because there is no good reason. You're sabotaging a relationship. It's a heart issue. It's our heart issue, and we need to get it dealt with. How many know that jealousy has a root? To every fruit, there's a root, right? Come on. Here's the root of jealousy, fear, insecurity, immaturity. Wow. Let's look at this verse quickly. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3, verses 2 and 3. Let, let me tell you something about the Corinthians. They were wealthy, but whiny. Uh. Remember, they, they had it all, man. They had power. They had prestige. They had prosperity. They had popularity. But they had an issue with everybody else. Remember, Paul rebuked them because they had all this money, but yet they didn't want to give anything to the church. He had to go to another church that had two pennies to scrape together, and they gave more than the wealthy church did. Wow. Now, let's look at what the Apostle Paul told these, uh, this group of believers. He said, I have had to feed you with milk and not with solid food because you couldn't digest anything stronger. It's about to get good. Come on. And even now, you still have to be fed on milk. This is the Apostle Paul speaking to the Corinthian believers. He said, for you are still only baby Christians controlled by your own desires, not God's. Then he dropped the bomb and lowered the boom. He said, when you are jealous of one another, let me say that again. When you are what? Jealous of one another and divide up into quarreling groups. Because how many know you can't gossip by yourself? you got to pull somebody else in it. You know, we, in the church world, we have a nice word. We call it sharing. Well, let me share with you about what so-and-so is going through so we can pray about it. You ain't going to pray. We're just going to gossip. Come on, guys. When you are oh come on when you are jealous of one another and divided into quarreling groups doesn't that prove that you're still babies wanting your own way oh that's good in fact you're acting like people who don't belong to the Lord at all all right somebody say amen or yeah. me yeah so here's the deal when we divide up into groups and we do that little clicky garbage. Garbage, yes. We think that we're avoiding, that avoiding them and separating, uh, you know, from them is, is going to help us. The problem is, is it doesn't. Because we take our issue with us. And there will always be somebody that's better, that's better at something than us. There will always be somebody that has something more than you do. So if you move from this group to this group, then guess what? You took your issue with you, it's coming. Here's the number two thing. How do we know? If jealousy is in your heart, number two, you find it difficult to celebrate their blessings. Oh, yeah. Or if their blessings have more to do with you than with them. Mm. Huh. Okay, so um, I'm going to tell like a 30-second story. I get, got permission from him um, to tell this story. Um, 
dated a guy before Anthony. Uh, yes, I did. And uh, shh, I knew it. He was reaching for his microphone. Well, let me just tell the story. I can beat him up. Yes, you can. <laughs> that's, that's right, baby. You can. <laughs> Spiritual right there. All right. Um, so, absolutely. So, I here's where that comment comes from. Um, before Anthony, the poor boy from Wachula, Florida, um, the guy that I dated uh, showed up one day with a plum-colored Porsche, right, that he had just bought, brand new, off the lot. And um, we were serious, so I thought. I cared about him, so I thought. He pulls up in, a, at the office. I didn't know he was going to buy it. He was going to surprise. He wasn't buying it for me. It was for him, but he was going, and he wanted to surprise the office, and he wanted to surprise me, and it was a big deal. It's a big deal because he had done a lot of good business, and he ended up just being blessed in a great way, came, pulled up with his plum Porsche, and here's the deal. Half the office went running out to see Brian's Porsche, and I did not. For whatever reason, on the inside of me, I was, it was about me. His blessing was about me. I was mad. He didn't tell me. He didn't let me in on it. I didn't get to pick the color. Hmm. He was showing everybody instead of just me at first. Oh, it was all about me. So I stayed inside the building while everybody else ran out. People were running in going, aren't you going to come see Brian's Porsche? I pretended like I was busy inside the building. Oh, I'll be out there in a minute. <laughs> Do you know what that was? Jealousy. Envy, anger, comparison, wah, 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 baby. It wasn't long after that that Brian broke up with me. I asked him across the table, what's going on? He said, well, I kind of knew that day that you didn't come out to see my Porsche. Here's the deal. I don't want to be with somebody that won't celebrate my victories in life. Wow. He was absolutely right. He was absolutely right. I was jealous. I was scared. I was scared he was going to take his little Porsche and go find himself another girl. It was all about me. If you and I find ourselves in the place where we can't cel celebrate other people's victories, where we can't get excited for them, something's wrong inside your heart. Come on. That's right. And you know what's funny about that is you know that in December, my man bought, bought me a, a new car. Well, it was new to me, right? The used car. However, I pulled up in this parking lot, and it was so funny what comes back to you. I pulled up in this parking lot. I parked it, came in to clean, and whatever we were doing that day, we were doing um, angel tree stuff, and guess what? I didn't announce, hey, I got a car, but somebody saw me pull up and said, you got a car? Half the church went running outside to see it, and they were so excited for me. I immediately remembered Brian. And I walked back in here, and I also noticed that there were a couple that were too busy to come out to see the car. See, not that I needed somebody to come out to see the car, but I know that feeling. It's that green monster that's on the inside going, why am I upset with them for being blessed? I don't want to feel like that, but dear God, I feel like that. Is anybody with me? That's that green-eyed monster. It eats you up on the inside while mocking you the entire time. I can't believe you're so immature that you feel this way. You got to kill it. Lop its head off, and this is how we're going to do it today. You know, jealousy has a voice, and you know what the voice says? Well, if I had that money, come on, we make it about us, right? If I had that money, I would not have spent it that way. I would have bought this instead of that. Hmm. All right, let's keep going. Right? Yeah. How to know if jealousy is in your heart? Last thing, we're going to wrap it up on this, guys. If you secretly rejoice in their suffering. See, here's the deal. We know that we have an issue if when the only thing that could possibly fix it is that person failing. Is that person gaining weight? Come on, women. Come on, doesn't it make you feel better when you go to a class reunion and somebody? Mm. Isn't it amazing when we go to the beach and we see somebody that's put on some pounds since last summer? Doesn't that somehow make us feel better? That's not good. See, we know we have an issue when the only thing that could possibly help us 
is watching that person fail, that their kid didn't get the scholarship, or, 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 the, or that their kid didn't get into that school, or, or they gained weight, or their husband was unfaithful, or whatever it is. That is an issue when the only thing that will fix our jealousy is them failing. And here's the thing. That feeling alone proves to us that we have an issue. Yeah. Are you with me? Come on. You know what the Bible says about that? Is there a verse for that? You better believe it. Yeah. Proverbs, Solomon, the author, remember he said, Proverbs 24, 17, do not rejoice when your enemy fails. Wow. Mm. And do not let your what? Your heart be glad when he stumbles. All right, let me point out to you real quickly, let your heart be. We've been talking for a long time about we get to control what goes on inside of us. We have to think about what we're thinking about. Don't let your heart go in that direction. We did a message three weeks ago, don't follow your heart, because your heart is evil, your heart is vindictive, your heart goes in the wrong direction. Don't follow your heart, instead lead your heart, tell it what to think, tell it what to feel. Don't let your heart go in that direction and celebrate somebody else falling and failing. Listen, we feel bad when we feel this way, but then we justify it, don't we? Some of you are getting uncomfortable. We justify it. Here's the deal. What we do is this, yeah, but here's the thing. It's just not fair. I work just as hard as them. How come I'm not blessed like them? I work just as hard, and here's the thing. I don't understand. It's just not fair. Guys, what we have to recognize is something. They are not our problem. They are not our issue. There is a bigger issue going on that we're going to look at today, and some of you are going to push back from this. Some of you are going to go, I don't see it, I don't get it, so really the best thing that I can do is illustrate for you how this works. Our problem is not with our in-laws. Our problem is not with that person at church. Our problem is not with that person in the office. Our problem is not them. It's with something much, much bigger. So here's what I'm going to do just real quickly. We're going to give away some tablets today. We're going to give away some tab tablets. Does anybody like a tablet, you know, like to, to read on, do games on, anything like that? Okay. Um, so here's what we're going to do. Just, you know, I've got to make life fair, even though life's not fair. Because the inside of me as a pastor just thinks somebody's going to get mad and leave the church. So I'm just going to help you out real quick. If you'll look in front of you on the little um, metal part of a chair, two of you have a little green sticker. Anybody? You don't. That's you, brother. Come on. Who else right here, probably? There's a green sticker somewhere. Yeah, that's you. Come on. Hmm. So, 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 here's, so here's the thing with this. Here, you can come over here real quick. So we've got, uh, we've got two tablets, right? And so this is how this works. You want a tablet? What would you do with it? Like you're a teenager. Don't you have 60 of these things? Right? Talk to me. You have a phone. I, asked, I, I told my daughter we were giving out tablets. You know, she said, I don't need no tablet. I got a phone. <laughs> That's what she said. I said, oh, okay, be that way. What would you do with it? Do you have one? No. Oh. Yeah, it's okay, got it. Got it. <laughs> okay, so here's what we're going to do. This is how I picked them up, and so here's what we're going to do. Go ahead, open yours. It's a cool church that just gives out stuff, huh? So you got a tablet. What do you say? Yeah, well, no, they are, yes, thank you, but I mean, are you happy? I don't want to say, I don't need to do that, but yes, you're happy? Uh-oh. Yvette got a different type of tablet. She got a writing tablet with scripture all over it. Hmm, so hang on a second. So right now, Hayden's feeling, woohoo! I got blessed. Thank you, Jesus. And Yvette's going, okay, I totally got shafted on that one. What in the heck just happened? And then somebody else is on in the audience going, how come I didn't get chosen? I never get chosen. I never win anything. Are you with me? Is anybody with me? 
So hang on, let's just play this out. No one was getting anything when we woke up this morning, so we're all even, right? She's still blessed because she has a journal that I know there's lots of stuff in her head and her heart that needs to go in that book. And he got a blessing even though, I'm a teenager, I got my phone. <laughs> right? All right, you can sit down. Thanks, guys. Here's the deal. Here's the deal, guys. This is the real world. This is the real world, and this is how this works. The world that we live in says everything needs to be fair. And trust me, as we were working this out, everything inside of me was saying, you can't possibly bring two people up here and only give one of them a real tablet. That's not fair. See, everything inside of me says I need to run to the back and get another tablet and make it fair. But I'm not going to. You know why? Because God doesn't. And here's what I need us to understand today. God is not fair. He is just, but he is not fair. Let's take a look at this verse right here that we're going to look at in uh, 1 Chronicles. Let's go to that real quickly, 29 and 12. The Bible says, Riches and honor come from you alone, and you are the ruler of all mankind. Your hand controls power and might, and it is at your discretion that men are made great and given strength. So the, the bottom line is, is that they both could have sat there, taken me out of the equation completely, compared what they had, and they could have been upset with one another. But then it would have sunk into them that Hayden really didn't do anything wrong. He was thrown out of the audience just the same, brought out of the audience just the same. So that really couldn't be mad at him, although that's what we do in life though, right? So if we really look deeper in this, and this is where some of you are going to push back, the issue is not with one another. It's with God. Why? Because in this scenario, while I am certainly not God, I did have the choice which one of them got blessed. More. More. We don't really want fair, guys. We want more. It's not fair. No, no, you don't want fair. Because if God came down right now to distribute gifts, we wouldn't want an equal amount. We would want more than the other person. Amen. Come on. And the bottom line is, is that God never said he was fair. According to the scripture, he has the discretion to give out whatever it is that he give out. I have the discretion to give one out to one person and not to the other, and that's what I chose. And they can get mad at each other, but at the end of the day, the only person they can get mad at is me. Amen. See, your problem isn't with someone else. Your problem's really with God. Because God could have made you taller, but he didn't. God could have given you a better family, but he didn't. God could have put you in a different state. God could have. God could have kept your marriage together and he didn't. God could have kept that person in your life when you wanted him. God could have, but he didn't. So let's just do this. Let's be real honest. Let's be real, real. Let's go to God with what's really on our heart. You gypped me. Mm. At least that's how I feel. It's at least how I feel. I don't understand. It's not fair. Come on, you want to have a temper tantrum? Have it with God. Come on. Stop tearing each other to pieces. Stop sitting somewhere and discussing how they spend their money, what they do with their blessings, if they deserve it. If it's fair, stop doing that junk. Come on. Instead, take all of that to God and say, God, you know what my real problem is? I don't get it. I don't get it. Take it to God. He is a big God, and he can absolutely handle it. He knows it's there anyways. Right. Jealousy's voice. Anger's is you owe me. Guilt's is I owe you. Jealousy's is God owes me. Wow. Now, I know that some of you went, mm -mm, no, I've never said that. You're right. You haven't said it. Perhaps you need to. Perhaps you just need to go to God and be honest and say, Lord, I kind of feel gypped. And really, the only thing that gets me through life is sitting here and using that as my excuse. My excuse to not move forward. My excuse to not do more. My excuse, because you know what? It's not fair. 
God says it's time to give up that excuse. He knows exactly what he's doing when he distributes gifts and talents and blessings. And if you and I will take our eyes off of everybody else, give it to God, ask him to heal up our heart, and then ask him to help us to focus on what he did bless us with, man, we can do great things. That's right. Come on. Anthony was raised in a place with a daddy as an alcoholic in prison and in jail growing up, brothers, drug dealers, and you know what? He could have sat in that all of his life and said, it's not fair. I would be way further ahead if you had given me a better family, a better father that could raise me. Instead, he loved what he had. He embraced his daddy. He said, Daddy, you're doing the best you can, and I'm going to draw a line in the sand, and maybe I don't have an example of what to be in life. Maybe the only example you gave me is what not to be, and I'll do something with that. You see, all of us are here today, and here's the thing. We could sit here, and the God owes me, and it's not fair. Or what we can do is say, Lord, this chunk is on my heart, and I don't want to be this way. And it's so hard for me to celebrate other people, and that tells me you need to change me. So change me, because I don't want to feel like this, and I don't want to be this person. And so this is what I'm going to ask you today. If you want to know how to kill this green-eyed monster, then let's figure it out today. We have to learn to celebrate, not just tolerate people. Can I say that again? We need to learn to celebrate people, not just tolerate people. Why? Because celebration breaks the power of jealousy. Mm. Come on, guys. Celebration breaks the power of jealousy. Right. Mm. Guys, when we're stuck in jealousy, we destroy our relationships because it's all about them. It's their fault. It's them. It's them. It's them. When we are in jealousy... We can't love, and that is the number one thing as Christians we should be doing is loving. Go home and read 1 Corinthians 13. The last place you heard it was probably a wedding. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It does not keep record of wrongs. Come on. When we're in jealousy, we can't even be Christians. We can't love. We can't serve people. And we certainly can't embrace what God's given us. Here's how we do it. These are our three steps. We're going to go to close right now. Number one, take it to God. Clean out your heart. Be bold enough to go to God and say, God, I talk about people all the time. When people are blessed, it eats me up on the inside. When things are happening good for other people, it's all about me. I don't want to be like that no more. God, I can't rejoice with people like the bible says rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn i can't rejoice with people because it's about me take it to god acknowledge the feeling and bring it to god and say god i need you to change me clean out my heart number two resolve it here's the thing this is not for everybody but it is for some for some of you you've destroyed relationships because you were in jealousy and envy you were in anger you pushed them away. It was all about them. You didn't know what it was. You just knew there was something you couldn't trust. Uh-uh. For some of us, we've treated other people poorly because we're jealous of them. And it would be a good thing to not only go to God, but to go to them and say, hey, I've treated you really awfully. And you know what? I'm sorry. Please forgive me. This sounds so juvenile to say and so childish, but I was jealous of you. I need you to help me. Please forgive me. I'm trying to change. And number three, the only way to do it, guys, is to celebrate. Celebrate. Develop a habit of celebrating other people, even when your insides are screaming. Go especially to that one that stirs up feelings of jealousy and fear and insecurity and pain on the inside of you. Go to that person and celebrate them. When they pull up with something nice, run out there and say, oh, I'm so happy for you. The inside of you might be going, no, you ain't. No, you ain't. Some of you are going to go, but that's insincere, and I don't like to be fake. Get over that. Give me a break. That's called justification to your sin. Here's what, je here's what celebrating does. It does this. It tells jealousy in your heart, you don't own me. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not being this person that I don't like anymore. This is not who I am. It's not who God called me to be. I'm going to kill that thing. Celebration will absolutely kill you before it kills it, but you got to keep on pressing. You've got to go and celebrate others. When you see them on Wednesday night, you look beautiful tonight. Oh, my gosh, she looks beautiful. Whatever that 
is. Because here's what's going to happen. You're going to sit down with somebody and say, this is how I've been feeling around you. And they're going to go, how could you feel that around me? I have insecurities too. You guys will end up best friends. It's ridiculous what the enemy does to us. But we've got to start by celebrating. We're going to end today, and it's really simple. Really simple, guys. Last night I told God, I said, listen, Lord, I, I need a visual. I got some visuals, but I need to give them something as they leave. And he said, give them a kiss. And I thought, okay, I can't do that. Because <laughs> that'll make him jealous. That's not good. And I walked past, and I found a little green Hershey's kiss with the word celebrate coming out of it. Yes, Jesus always lines up my messages very well. Here's the thing. On your way out, you're going to get a little one of these, and it says celebrate. Now, some of you women are just going to go right into it and eat it, and that's fine. <laughs> okay? Take the little thing, tape it to somewhere, whatever. But listen, you've got to choose to celebrate. You want to kill jealousy? You've got to choose to celebrate those who stir up in you envy, jealousy, anger, frustration, fear that something's going to get taken away from you. You've got to celebrate. It's how to be a Christian. It's how to be his, it's how to be whole, it's how to be a free, it's how to walk in freedom, and it's how to have real relationships. Because God called us to celebrate one another, to lift each other up, and to help people to be better. Colette and Fino are coming right now, and they're just going to take us um, to song today. And we're, it, it's not just a song. <coughs> it's something, th it's an opportunity to go, Lord, what's in my heart? Ugh. Yeah, I was one or two of those things. I was all three. Lord, I need you to help me. I hate how I talk about people. I hate how I tear other people down to make myself feel better. Lord, that shouldn't make me feel better. Lord, help me today to be able to celebrate others. Help me today to be able to rejoice when people rejoice and mourn with them when they mourn. I want you today just to examine, have, has jealousy come in and ruined any of your relationships? Have you distanced yourself with people out of envy and out of fear? Because if so, God wants to make that right. He wants to make it right in your heart, and he wants to make it right in that relationship. If that relationship is still available and still worth salvaging, he could do it. So if you're here today, I just want you to examine your heart. This is a really straightforward, simple message today. And we want you to get it. Because I know that at the end of the day, just like mirror, mirror on the wall, we stand in our mirrors and we hate what we see. We hate how we are. We hate how we've been. We hate how we act. We hate how we feel. Change it by choosing to celebrate God's creation and let it bring out of you what does not need to be there.